How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mass of Beer Reviews. Back with a beer I've been wanting to try for quite a while. This one just landed in my area because we get drips and drabs of Old Nation from time to time. And it is their B43. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, uh, Old Nation Brewing. It is their IPA, 7% alcohol by volume, Brute Edition. Yeah. Yeah. I like brute beers if they're done right. And this one kind of came late to the party, perfectly honest with you. Um, because, you know, it was kind of around this time last year that brute beers were really taking off. Um, this was packaged only about two weeks ago. So, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. What else have we got here? Um, let's see. Malt. It's just Pilsner malt. Um, it's got Calypso Amarillo Citra in the boil and Citra Amarillo and Simcoe and the dry hop no residual sugar so they're giving it the brute treatment um which is basically in the eat all the kind of residual sugar out of it which is kind of like what i really dig when it comes to a lot of heezies that's why i've been really wanting to try this one but the one thing that got me really interested in this and not that i'm a super kind of like label category nutrition watching guy three grams of carbs on a seven percent hazy ipa i kind of find that hard to believe but we're gonna drink it we're gonna see what's what. Let's dive in a sucker. Let's see what she's got. So she doesn't look all that hazy on the pour. Uh, I mean, it's really, I would assume it'd be really hard to make a hazy fruit IPA, but for all intents and purposes, um, it's got a soft taste to her. I just assumed it was hazy because it was Old Nation. Maybe that's my fault. Uh, label wise, it's basically following uh, what they do to a T. Uh, label wise, just with that B43 uh, on it as opposed to all their other beers um and yeah i mean there's a huge crazy like honeydew melon just exploded out of the can and she's got a soft taste to her she resembles more of an unfiltered pilsner than an ipa but you know nice head to her not too crazy soft carbonation she looks like a rank, nice tasty beer let's see if i get a nose i mean the amount of citrus and tropical fruit and peaches it's it's not even like more times than not when i talk about it's kind of wide gamut of fruit, like a tropical fruit medley or a fruit medley in general. It's more of like a, um, oh, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and it's kind of hard to discern. No, this is a tropical fruit blend, but it's like everything's like cranked to a max, at least on a nose. So you're getting huge melon component, like a honeydew melon, um, cantaloupe, um, just regular kind of mango on the nose. And you're getting a big, huge kind of uh, uh, peachy notes, uh, just uh, kind of smacking you in the face along with that soft citrus, soft kind of tangerine, um, and nectarine, along with that kind of uh, that uh, tropical fruit kind of just bursting in your face. It's that vibrant and that aggressive on the nose. A super amazing nose on this one. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It smells like organic juicy fruit gum is kind of how it smells. Instead of being like that kind of confectionery powdery kind of gum thing, it's like all organic. Like you're almost like walked through the doors of a massively blooming, all ripened orchard of a multiple different fruits. I gotta dive in. Cheers. It follows. It follows in the taste. And it's all hops. It's all hops. And it's all the drop-down bittering hop, too. That's it, This is about as New England IPA using, as you can get without being a hazy. There is a little bit of bittering in here. It's very, very minimal, and it's on the edge. But I think it's a testament to how well they made this beer. Because I think once you drop out all the particulate in this beer, once you drop out all the residual sugar... That bitterness really can come through, can really jump up and bite you in the face. Well, it doesn't really happen here. So uh, kudos to those guys not only making this relatively dry and very drinkable and not overtly sweet, but keeping that bitterness in check. I think that's a very impressive task with how many hops are obviously thrown in here. The only way I would say this is this vibrant without all hops is if there's some kind of extract put in here, but it doesn't, it doesn't really kind of translate to that in here it comes off very organic very crisp and very clear okay and aside here it's a brewing is not is a natural process so values are approximate and may vary slightly so they're talking about the carb thing people really kind of hammer on that um i'm not really gonna get all too tied up on it as long as it's relatively close in carbs to that i mean it's got this really nice softness to it it's not creamy it's not sultry it's not silky but it's got the softness to it again hard to pull off in the brute beer 
there is a subtle sweetness to it. It's not overtly dry. It's dry in the grand scheme of things when it comes to a, a, a New England style fruit juicy hop to the hilt kind of beer, but it's not bone dry. I do like that. I do like that little bit of sweetness on there. Like I said, that little bit of touch of bittering, but really where it shines is the way that those hops come off and the way they come off is super vibrant um, and super explosive. Uh, this drinks well above its weight class. It doesn't drink like a 7% beer. I'm not going to get in my soapbox about this drinking below its weight class. I think this is a really cool beer in the way it's made, and I like the fact that it drinks that way. I love this beer. I think this beer is fantastic. I think this is kind of where... <sighs> this is where I like a lot of my hazies to play in that direction. They don't get here. Listen, this is not something I want to drink like a case of, but I'll drink a couple of these and be okay with it. Again, 7% is going to creep up pretty quick, but it's where a lot of the kind of New England style hazies kind of trend, and then I really dig them. They're not overly sweet. They're very vibrant. They're kind of explosive, but not overpowering. That's what you have here, but you're wrapping it up in a more tight and tidy, clean, crisp kind of package, which is just kind of a mind fuck in and of itself because it's it's technically, and for all intents and purposes, you drink this out of a black glass blind, you're going to be confused by it because of the way it comes off crisp and clean, but you're going to be like, this is somebody's New England style easy, but then I think you're kind of blown away by the, kind of like, the clarity of the beer itself, but just the sheer impact, the way these hops come off, and how easy it drinks, it's a winner. That's tasty. That's tasty. Let's cut to the chase, because you know, guys, you know I like it already. Is this the best brute IPA that I, or brute beer in general? I, I don't know. I've had some, you know, saisons. Like, let's go brute IPA that I've had. Head and tails above anything. It's not even close. That's how good this beer is. It's like, I like brute IPAs. I like the way they play, and they can be fun, and they can do this, and they can do that. This is like, okay, this is like the by far and away the best. So there, there's this uh, there's this wing place where I used to live in, up in a uh, Pittston area, Duryea. It's called a town tavern. Service is a little bit to be a, uh, to be a, uh, to be a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To, poopy is the service. But the wings are the best wings in the world. And people would always be like, well, how good are they? They're better than these per person and better than that person. And the way I would always rank town tavern wings is, okay, I'd be like, okay, here's the deal. On a scale from 1 to 10, I would put Town Tavern Wings first, and then 2, 3, 4, and 5, we're just going to leave blank, and we'll pick it up at 6. That's how I'd rank those beers. As far as brute beers, bro, brut beers, whatever you want to call them. I like to call them brute, so I'm trying to say brut because I know people freak out. Um, that's where I would rank this. I'd rank this at number 1. Brut, brute, IPAs. Not brute beers in general, because I know some of the saison really do it for me. Um, this would be number one. Let's, you know, two, three, four, five. Let's leave those blank. Let's pick it up at six. That's where this one lands. It's that good of a beer. So there. Is it one of the best? Yes, I've already said that. Um, it's up there at Mount Rushmore status. Actually, it should be better than Mount Rushmore status. It should be up there by itself. Bag of availability. I forget what I paid for this, but I don't think it was all that much. Maybe around 15 bucks a four-pack. I would pay that all day. And leave you with, if you like what, will you like this beer? If you like New England style hazies, but you don't want them to skew too sweet, if you like that huge burst of tropical hops, and you do like the non-bittering portion of the show, I love bittering in IPAs, but the way it works here, it works for me. So if you like that kind of non-bittering portion of the show, you just like interesting, well-made, explosive, vibrant beer. You know, I love subtlety. I love lager. I love Pilsner. I love cleanliness. I love clean beers. But sometimes I want something that has a little bit of volume to it. And that's where this one kind of stands in a very cool way because it's still kind of like a, a drinkable, crisp, clean beer. Yeah, if you like fun beer, you'll like this one. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, beer massive. Want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little brute beer right now. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.